So A.H. has alleged some incendiary claims about April 21st, 2016, when it comes to Johnny Depp. And many of those, they focus around Johnny Depp being inebriated. Now, many of those claims, they have been taken apart in quite extraordinary fashion. I'll talk about that some in context of the video, too. But one of the things that I want to add here is something that people continually ignore. This is the first witness statement of one Edward White. This is the person that Johnny Depp had a business meeting with before he went home, and he can testify to the fact that, well, you know those things about being quote-unquote inebriated? Yeah, not so much. So hey there, so this video, it will be added to a playlist that, when it's done, will contain all the audio that I can find. It will contain all depositions and all testimonial because the media, they did not supply this. They've ignored some of this stuff outright, and people, when you're making informed decisions. You should have all of this at your fingertips. See, a person's life was almost destroyed because of accusations. And well, look at the people surrounding those accusations and look at what they've said. And again, what was ignored when they said it. Now, in order to understand this context, you need to understand the accusations. And what better way to cover this than with A.H.'s own words? Remember, she alleged 14 separate incidents. This is incident 13 of 14. This comes from her her first witness statement, she provided seven because she kept changing up things and wanting to add to them. That's crazy. That's it's called justice, by the way. And if I change up certain words, that's a platform issue. So birthday party, April 2016. On the 21st of April 2016, having my 30th birthday party with friends at the penthouse. Johnny was a couple of hours late. When he arrived, he was drunk and high on drugs. After everyone else had left, Johnny and I went to the bedroom and we spoke about him missing the party. I was upset that he had missed my birthday. I was really sad about it, and I told him so. He soon got angry. He said I was always blaming him for everything. At this point, we were up out of the bed, but still in the bedroom. Johnny picked up and threw a magnum-sized bottle of champagne at me, which missed hit the wall. I can't remember if it smashed, but something definitely did. It could have been another bottle or a glass, which was sitting near to where the magnum hit the wall, or he could have also thrown a glass at me. I'm not completely sure, but I remember that bits of flying shattered glass hit me. Johnny then grabbed me by the shoulders, pushed me onto the bed, blocked the bedroom door when I tried to leave, grabbed me by the hair, pushed me to the ground, scraped my knees on broken glass, screamed at me, taunting me as uh, if I thought he was a quote-unquote tough guy or something like that, and said that he wouldn't let me leave. At that point, in a tussle, the lamp got broken. When I stood up, Johnny shoved me down again, but I eventually escaped from the bedroom and walked through the office. Walked, by the way. I think I was trying to put together a bag of overnight things. As I was walking around the desk, Johnny shoved me, grabbed me uh, by the back of the hair. I got away from him. Back into the bedroom, Johnny pushed me again. I put up my arms to try and defend myself and Johnny pushed them down. Then he squared up to me and bumped his chest into mine, making me stumble backwards onto the bed. I tried to plead with him not to be like this on my birthday. Then I tried walking past him to leave the bedroom, but he pushed me to the floor again. Then he walked out of the bedroom, smashing things, pictures, and photographs as he went. He left me a note, happy bleeping birthday. Now, like I said at the beginning, that assertion rests on the idea that Johnny Depp was inebriated because that has been the go-to defense for the son and A.E.H. You see it in every deposition given by them. For example, here's I.O. Tillett Wright. My experience with Johnny Depp, time that we were close, from 2013 to 2000. 2014 was that he could be incredibly kind, generous, and loyal, and great fun to be around. He was sweet and kind until he wasn't, and he could be incredibly mean and vicious, especially when he was drunk or high. Again, all of those actions rest on the idea that that was what transpired. Now, enter the obscure and unfortunately largely ignored first witness statement of one Edward White that doesn't argue in the aftermath like most documents do. You know, arguing about, hey, does that picture have any evidence? Or do we see photographs? No, this speaks to the heart of the matter. Because again, I'm drilling this point, by the way. Again, 
Johnny Depp, in order to not be this loving, kind, considerate person, he has to be inebriated. And this is the person that met with Johnny Depp before he went to that birthday party. So the first witness statement of Edward White. I am the senior partner, Edward White and Company, LLP, certified public accountant with registered address at United States, which I founded in 1976. My firm represents a number of high net worth individuals, including the claimant, I'm always going to use Johnny Depp instead of the full name, just to note, who we represented since March 14, 2016. Now, I think that date is actually important, too, because when you're thinking about meeting somebody in that first month, few months, you still are getting accustomed to their mannerisms. You're trying to read them in meetings, so you notice a lot more. If they were familiar, maybe you could ignore something, and they would also have a long-term business relationship. But remember the event. It transpires April 21st, 2016. So unless otherwise stated, the facts and matters referred to in this witness statement are within my own personal knowledge, are true, or true to the best of my knowledge, information, and belief based on sources stated within this witness statement. That, to note, is typically in all of these because it's basically saying, hey, I believe this stuff is true, and I would testify to that fact. I make this witness statement in support of the claimant's claim in these proceedings. I do not know the full details of the claimant's claim against the defendants in these proceedings. However, I understand that the defendants allege that Mr. Depp arrived at a birthday celebration for his former wife, we're just going to call her A.H. every time, on April 21, 2016, when he was drunk and high on drugs. I participated in a meeting with Mr. Depp on the evening of the 21st of April, 2016. This meeting took place in Mr. Depp's office at his production company, I'm just going to call it IN, located in Los Angeles, California. Also present were, so you have all of these business partners here. I mean, look at this. You have Mr. Richard Smith, my partner. So you have Mr. Troy Schmidt, Lawrence L. You have FF, I'm going to butcher that name, I apologize, and Christy Dembroski. The meeting began at approximately 7.30 p.m. and lasted between 1.5 and 2 hours. Now, I really want you to think about that statement within the context of AH's accusations because, again, wanting to drive home the point of quote-unquote the monster. Here you have the person writing this out. That's one, two, three, four, five, six business partners. That doesn't say that there aren't people on his side of it as well. So you have a minimum of seven people in a room for 1.5 to two hours. They're going over financials, which if he has to make business decisions, sign papers and on, allowing him to consume copious amounts of alcohol, that would be legal to consume alcohol, but it would be illegal to allow him to make business decisions, but then illicit substances as well. Really, they're tarnishing the reputation of this company. It's not just Johnny Depp, but all of these people as well. They're saying, yeah, that's their professionalism on display. Now, this continues. I was able to observe Mr. Depp extensively up close during the meeting, and I did not perceive him to be physically impaired by alcohol or any other substance in any way. To the contrary, we discussed. You have your discussion here. Look at what they're talking about. A number of significant, you notice that qualifier, significant, financial and business matters at the meeting. And look at this here too, this statement. Mr. Depp gave them his full and undivided attention. If you're consuming copious amounts of illicit substances or, you know, alcohol as well, can you give your full and undivided attention? Hmm. Well, continuing, he participated actively and intelligently. Can you do that as well if you're, again, with illicit or with alcohol? in the meeting from beginning to end. I do not believe he would have been able to participate in the matter that he did had he been impaired in any way. I believe that once the meeting had finished, Mr. Depp left to return home directly, given that it was already late in the day. 
Now, what's hilarious is that A.H. has unwittingly helped cement this timeline for you with really innocuous-seeming statements. This, for example, is from the DVRO. You know, she got this back in 2016, so this is the earliest statement that you can find. As everyone was preparing to leave my birthday party, Johnny showed up. So you have Johnny at a meeting, 7.30. Lasts for two hours. Afterwards, he has to showcase nicety. You've seen him at the courtroom. He has to meet and greet. He has to tell people that they're they're good to be around you know he's a nice person in that he showcases decorum then he's with security so there's always the protocol of loading up they drive more carefully because again security got to get to the house got to unload got to get into the house by then if the birthday party's still going on yeah he didn't stop off what's the point in saying that well if that timeline is accurate if those people are right and they had a formal business meeting with significant items discussed, he doesn't stop off, then the monster, it couldn't have arrived. No, it would have been Johnny Depp. Johnny Depp tells you, too, when he arrives, he was actually accosted by A.H. He wants to go sit down. He wants to read a book. But she's actually hitting him in the face, so much so that he cannot concentrate. He has to leave because it's so crazy. Now, that's in addition to Starling Jenkins' claims of having to buy back Johnny Depp's phone from a homeless person, which, well, you can see his stuff is missing. You can see text messages to A.H.'s cell phone about this. Now, that's also in addition to the pictures that, say, Savannah McMillan posted. You can see them hashtagged, hashtag Dirty 30, meaning this was her 30th birthday party. You can see the date that that was posted on as well. And there's plenty of pictures within it showcasing her face. And let me tell you, there's something missing there. It's called evidence. There are other photographs, too. You have Coachella, for example. You can see everybody there, all of the people that end up testifying on behalf of one AH. But AH is missing something. You know, all that evidence that would be written all over her face. There's plenty of evidence to the contrary, but I wanted to put this in, the first witness statement of one Edward White, because again, this has been largely ignored, and I think this is powerful when you look at it, because again, it doesn't just undermine things in the aftermath. You're not staring at cloudy pictures and trying to figure out whether or not something transpired. No, you're looking to the beginning. And if you look to the beginning and you say, well, this didn't happen, then that so-called monster, it never existed. But anyway, you let me know what you think about that. And as always, I appreciate you showing up, making this stuff work. You empower these endeavors. Check out other videos too. Check out memberships if you want to support the channel. There are links in the description as well. And check out our comic book. That thing, it is doing remarkably well. It's in demand, meaning we're still working on it. But we need you to get word out. But thank you. Like I said, we appreciate you. And well, we'll see you soon.